Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you a, another new technique that you could do using Borland Genetics, uh, and it's uh, using the dark side tool uh, for, in particular, for uh, extracting more information from siblings, full siblings. So let's uh, define the problem. We're going to be working on a project for my friend Keith. Uh, let's go to Manage D DNA Resources. By the way, notice that there are some new menu options on the screen, uh, the one you're looking at, and that's not because I have some special version. I do, but this is not it. <laughs> uh, this is uh, got the imputer, no longer grayed out. The creeper is still grayed out because I'm not anywhere near done with that tool yet, um, but I'm working on it. Uh, and also you'll see the new segment view export. I'll, I'll show you what that does because that's one of the things we can use to QC our work here. Uh, so if you don't have these, they, they are in the new Borland Genetics version 2.0. It's also free, just like version 1.5 was. Uh, just go to the same place where you got 1.5 and download the version 2.0. It's in the same folder. Uh, I also left 1.5 in there for anybody who prefers it for some reason. Uh, but in installing the new version will not do anything harmful to your data or anything like that. It'll just uh, update the, uh, the new version. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, and by the way, where do you get them? You can get it at the link at the bottom of the ISOG article for Borland Genetics if you Google that, or go to the Borland Genetics Facebook uh, page, and there's a link there. It's a pinned uh, post or go to join the uh, Borland Genetics Users Group, which I highly recommend, uh, because there's a lot of people there that are becoming experts in the tools, really. Uh, some know how to use them better than I do for different purposes. So uh, you can uh, join there, and there's also an announcement that's pinned to the top there where you can download the new version. OK, and OK, so let's go to Manage Resources and take a look at what we got here on this project. There are to do 10 kits there, although I started out with four, and I've already gotten started with some of the other tasks to get ready to use the dark side tool uh, to save some time. Uh, but let me explain who these people are in relation to each other. We've got Anna, Lynn, and Pat are three sisters. They are full sisters, and it's important that they are full sisters uh, because what we're going to do in the next uh, process only works with full siblings. It will not work with uh, half siblings. Uh, there are other there are half siblings are extremely useful for other things, but not for this particular technique. Technique, uh, and it doesn't matter if they're sisters or brothers. But so we have a set of three siblings: Anna, Lynn, and P Pat, and Anna's son Keith. So when you see uh, a child and uh, parent pair, like Anna and Keith, the first thing that should come in your mind with my tools is reverse phasing. Um, so I already did that. I did that in Excel back in April, but I just redid it also using the toolkit for consistency and to make sure that I didn't make any, uh, what do you call it, typos, because the automated tool is not going to make any typos. So this is the map that I made back in April. Um, before Portland Genetics existed. Uh, I did it in Excel, and I more recently converted it to DNA Painter, so see what I'm doing. Uh, and it's not a bad reverse phase. Uh, it's not 100%, um, because some areas, there, overall, there was a lot of uh, uh, low match density with uh, Anna's father, uh, particularly, uh, I think, he may have some German ancestry, and uh, Germany hasn't really tested very much yet, is my understanding. Um, so uh, this is the map, and reverse phasing is simply it's taking a parent and using a child to phase to uh, have the parent split into by grandparent. Uh, so here, blue is the Anna's father, red is Anna's mother, and the top of each chromosome is uh, Keith, it so shows what Anna passed to Keith, and the bottom copy of each chromosome in DNA Painter here is anti-Keith, uh, Keith's evil maternal twin. So what the reverse phase tool just does, just as a uh, reminder, 
is essentially a mini visual phasing project treating Keith and his evil twin as siblings and uh, you know, using that to determine recombination points. And then the reverse phase tool in my toolkit uh, aligns those. So it'll, it, instead of having a blue and then switch to red on the top first chromosome and back to blue, and then a big gap there that may go, you know, red, blue, or it may just stay blue the whole thing. We don't know. Um, what it'll do is at those clear change points, it'll it basically uses this map to realign them, to put all the blue in one kit and all the red in another kit. So I've already run that because it takes a lot of time and because I already did a demo of my reverse phasing tool in episode five. If you haven't seen that go back, it's very important for uh, using Borland genetics. It's one of the main features uh, of the software. Okay. So, and the reason uh, for Anna and Lynn and Pat with those two kits is because I already in advance used the uh, chameleon tool to create a combined MyHeritage and Ancestry.com template because two of the individuals had tested with MyHeritage earlier on, and then two had tested with the more recent uh, Ancestry uh, version two chips. So I wanted to have everything on the same template. Um, okay, so now, what we're going to do is something different. Uh, well, first, let's take a look at the new tool, the uh, the uh, view export segments. I'm not going to export them, but let's go back to the main menu and let's see what it does. So we're going to pick, uh, it only works for mono reconstructions. So let's take a look at Anna's father, for example which is really the goal of reconstruction goal we're doing with this project. Select, loading the resource. Identifying the segments. That's what it does. It just gives you a little DNA uh, segment visualization. And it's not as nice as a 20, uh, I'm sorry, as a, as DNA Painter, and it's not meant to be a replacement for DNA Painter. Just give you a preview so you can see what you have. Uh, and also, in case you do want to put this in uh, DNA Painter, you can export these segments uh, now using either Build 36 or Build 37, whichever you choose. I don't need to do that, but I want to bring this up so I can show you. Let's go back to the DNA Painter map. Now let's bring this up on top of it. Look at chromosome one, for example, on the top. Oops. And see the big gap there on the top, on the right of chromosome one. It's it's right where it is on the DNA painter map. So this worked. Um, and there's another little gap on chromosome one there too. Okay, so things are looking as they should. I'm just going to return to the main menu. I don't need to export it. We've already got the data in DNA Painter. That's where it came from. We'd just be going full circle. So, okay, now let's start with the dark side tool. Go back to manage resources because I'll explain what we're going to do. Normally, um, let's take the Lazarus tool, for example, from GEDmatch. Not really good with full siblings because what happens is Let's say you put a full sibling on the inside and then a full sibling on the outside. Well, you're going to get whatever they match. And uh, part of what they match might be on the father's side, part might be on the mother's side because they're full siblings, right? So you're just going to get a bunch of junk. Um, however, what we're going to do here is different. Um, we are going to compare Lynn to Anna's mother who is also, of course, Lynn's mother. It's not going to give us any new data if we did like a Lazarus type of comparison where we just look to see what they have in common and, and store that in another kit. That wouldn't get us anywhere. Um, instead, we're going to use the dark side tool, which is going to show us what Lynn has on her opposite chromosome, uh, her opposite copy of each chromosome, wherever it matches, wherever the one copy matches Anna's mother, the opposite copy must be DNA that Lynn inherited from her father. So we're going to get new information to add to our reconstruction for Anna's father and hopefully bring that up from 41% to something a bit higher. Um, and we know pretty much that anywhere that, uh, or at least we can hypothesize, 
that anywhere where Lin matches Anna's mother, uh, that means that that's the part that she passed to Keith because we did this using the reverse phasing tool. Um, there should be not much overlap, I would think, uh, in what we're reconstructing for the father. So let's let's try it. Uh, enough talking. Let's just get down to business. Let's load. I'm sorry. Back to main menu. Do the dark side tool. Select. As the child, we're going to put Lin, and we're going to use the combined template version of Lin. Please select relatives from the opposite side of the family of the child than the desired target parent. So we did the desired target parent is, is the father. Uh, we're going to select Anna's mother. So we're going to look for all the places where she matches Anna's mother and take the data from the opposite chromosome, the dark side. Close this. Distracting. Now, I asked for a name of the kid. I'm just going to call it Lynn's father. Of course, that's the same person as Anna's father. But just so I can keep track of the source of the data. Gender, Lynn's father, <laughs> of course, is a male. Continue. And these new progress bars are new in version two as well. They're not 100% perfect yet, but working on them. By the way, should you see the progress bar, or the progress bar act funny? Um, not funny as in you know flashing because it's working fast or anything like that, or or growing or shrinking because there's multiple processes going on. But if you should see that that green bar starts like appearing at the, like the top of your screen instead of within the uh, the progress window, if you want to call it that, the task, task execution progress window, if you see it like popping up somewhere else, that's a sign that your computer may be running out of memory, just so you know. Because what the program will try to do is steal money from less important, steal money, steal memory from less important processes so that it continue to run the most important ones. But if it's making problems for you for long periods of time, there may not be enough uh, non-important pieces of memory to borrow from, and it may affect your calculations. So just something to look out. If you see a screwy progress bar doing strange things in weird parts of your screen in version two, that may mean that you're running into some memory issues. Like if you try to put like six kits in the reverse uh, merged to stereo or something like that, you might see that happen, for example. Or if you've got like playing a video game while you're running the program or something. Also, in the update to version 2 that I put out this Saturday, uh, I corrected a progress bar error that you should probably shouldn't have seen anyway, because before you use most of the tools, you got to convert the templates, so everybody's in the same template, then you use a tool. But I think one or two of the tools allowed you to use different templates, and that crashed the progress bar. So if you see it, the, it's, the progress bar is crashing, and you're comparing kits on different templates or something, and like the dark side tool or something, um, Let's go ahead and download version 2.0 again. I fixed that bug. That was a bug that I found in the original version. Let's see. OK, so it's been added to the list. Let's take a look at the list. So there it is, Lynn's father, 
let's go back to the main menu and let's just take a look at it in the new view segment view uh, Lynn's father and I want to take a look at where it uh, reconstructed Lynn's father the question being is it unique data right so now let's go back to Go. The NA painter in the background. There we go. Okay. So let's start at the beginning. The first segment it looks like it recreated here is already on a segment where Keith had Anna's father. However, that does not necessarily mean anything because Anna's father had two copies of each chromosome. So what we're recreating here may not be the same blue that Keith had. Now for the next two segments on chromosome one, you see they look like they probably overlap the pink segment, segment on Keith, but it's the blue segment that, uh, it also overlaps the blue segment that anti-Keith had, that he got, you know, could have gotten, that Keith could have gotten from his mother, but instead he, uh, but instead he got some of his mother's, her mother's DNA. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the data from Lynn is not unique because they are in different clades and the father could have passed Anna his father's DNA, whereas he passed Lynn his mother's DNA. So just because they're on the same sections does not mean this is not unique data. It also doesn't mean it is unique data by just the fact that he had two copies of each chromosome, you could expect that half of each of these segments um, is likely to be, or not necessarily by segment, but half of the data here that we got from Lynn is likely to be redundant. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It'll increase the resolution of the data from uh, Anna, uh, just that won't increase the coverage any, which is our goal to you know generate more cousin matches really. Uh, but half of the data that we got from Lynn should theoretically uh, be unique data. And you'll see there's nothing going to be created over the gap because Lynn is never going to match the gap, and therefore there's nothing to pull in the opposite chromosome. This is only places where Lynn matched um, either, you know, matched the red on this diagram uh, at some point, and we're pulling Lynn's blue. Um, so if there's no red to match over the gap, in other words, another way to say this is the max, no matter if you had an infinite number of siblings and you did this, process and kept creating dark side tools for each one of the siblings and you added it all up and tried to create a complete uh, father, you know, for your, the max you're going to get is 82%, right? Because it was 41% uh, coverage of, uh, for the, uh, for the original file. So the max you can get is just the entire other copy uh, of the maternal, but 82% will be nice. I don't think we're going to get that high on this, but uh, Okay, so let's go back to the main menu. And let's do it again for Pat. So let's go to the dark side tool, select, uh, child from the list, Patricia combined templates, and we use Anna's mother as the relative from the opposite side of the family because we want to construct the father. Select. Again, let me take this down. There we go. Okay. This time we'll call it Pat's father. Who's a male? Continue.
Now it's converting the templates again, so there must have been something. Uh, I had already converted the templates. <clears throat> But perhaps the uh, converted versions were slightly different. So if you want, you can fast forward over this section. And uh, that shouldn't take too long. But we're really just doing the same exact thing we just did for Lynn, but we're doing it for Pat. So we're finding everything on the opposite copy of the chromosome where Pat matches her mother, which must therefore be her father's DNA. And we're extracting that half of which is, should be unique, roughly. I mean, it's not exact, but uh, on average, the expectation value is that half of that will be unique and can be added to the uh, total, or unique as far as not uh, the same as what Anna had. Now, Pat also has probably some of the same as what Lynn has, because you know, that's her sister too. So there is a bit of diminishing returns as you keep adding siblings, but I think Three siblings, we should have some nice coverage here. Performing merge calculations. Getting there. So then what are we going to do at the end? Well, first we're going to, once this is done, we're going to take a look and see what it reconstructed, what percentage, and we have a quick look at where, since I am kind of excited about my new visualization tool. And for those of you who may be in the U.S., uh, hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. We just had a big holiday here in the U.S. And today was Black Friday. Hope you found some good shopping deals if you chose to partake. I found some good deals. Three pairs of pants and two shirts for about $60 for I could wear to work. Okay. Almost done here. There we go. Saving to the library. Making a zip, although we're not going to upload this to GEDmatch. Um, we're going to upload a combined file. Okay. Resulting kit has been added to the resource list. Let's go check it out. Manage resources. Oh, sweet. 22%. Even better. Okay, so we got 41% from Anna, then we can add 17 and add 22. Remember, we're not going to add all 17. We're going to maybe add half of that, you know, statistically speaking. 
and uh, less than half of the 22. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to the main menu, take a look at the uh, segment view for Pat's father. And when I say again, Pat's father, Lynn's father, these are full siblings. It's the same person. I just, for bookkeeping purposes, to keep to give them different names. I could have put, I think the father's name is Carl. I could have put Carl Pat Clade, Carl uh, Anna Clade, Carl uh, Lynn Clade. And that's probably what I should have done to be consistent with my other videos. But all right, well, that's pretty nice, huh? And again, you see those gaps. Uh, I look at the top of chromosome one. It's got the big gap on the right. And we'll never fill that until we figure out phase on that. Uh, or, uh, let me re rephrase that. We won't fill it using this technique. Um, but hopefully we're doubling up some of the other areas where we only had a mono version of the father and we're, uh, had some stereo to it. Okay, return to the main menu. Go back to the merge resource, manage resources because I haven't saved in a while. Save resource list, select, call this project Keith. Okay, now back to the main menu and let's Humpty Dumpty. Now you're gonna see a warning in here that you didn't see before. Because I just put this in, in now that I'm being more conscious about memory. Uh, we wanna merge these to stereo because we're going cross clades. We've got three sibling clades. Uh, to a stereo kit. Warning, use with more than three kits is not recommended. And that's because you can run into uh, memory issues on some computers. So I just want to give a warning of that. Don't put 10 kits in the merge to stereo. The math will work, but your computer might not be able to handle it. And you know, I don't think most regular commercial PCs will be able to handle a merge to stereo with 10 kits, for example. Okay. There we go. So, Anna's father, Lynn's father, Pat's father. We're going to merge them all together, Humpty Dumpty style. Anyone want to guess the percent? I have not done this before, so my guess is going to be, uh, I haven't peaked. Let's see, we had 41 to start with. Let's say we get another 10 from Pat, 50%. I'm going to say 57% maybe. That's my guess. Who knows? Yeah, the merge to stereo script is very memory intensive. And I've modified it since uh, version 1.5 to actually make it a little less so, but still. Okay. Must be on the same template. See, we're running into a template issue here. I'm not sure why, because I converted the templates. One must be slightly different. Maybe my heritage changed templates or ancestry version two. But let's figure out using the chameleon tool which one is the oddball that's not on the same template. Um, my guess, since we created Pat and Lynn the same way, is that. Anna this is going to be on a different template. So let's include Anna, uh, Anna's father and Lynn's father. Select. Let's see, are they or are they not on the same template? And I understand that this is No mapping can be achieved because they're already in the same template. Okay, so 
How about Chameleon Pat and Lynn? Pat's father, Lynn's father. But DNA science is science, so it does take a little bit of the scientific method and uh, experimenting and uh, to get the best results. But I still strive to make these more user-friendly in the future. There we go. We found the issue, though. So... I think we want to map Pat onto Lynn, right? I think Pat is the one that is different select we don't want to do it twice And it's good that one or two things go slightly wrong in each video that I make here because you see they may go wrong when you try to do something too and you'll see why and uh, hopefully you'll be able to fix it or troubleshoot it yourself as, uh, as you watch some of these videos and see some of the things that can come up. So if you get an error message or a, or a warning that things aren't in the same template, now you know what to do. You'll go to the chameleon tool and you'll just figure out which one is not on the same template for whatever reason. Uh, probably because of uh, something the testing company did, not you. And you'll be able to troubleshoot it and fix it. Just like we did here. Halfway there almost. And when it says loading the resource from the library there, it's just a temp file that I created um, to avoid memory issues with that tool. Okay. Pat's father. We'll call it uh, my heritage version one, ancestry version two. Now, unless I converted the one, the wrong one, uh, but I think I chose the right one, we should all be in the same template now. Okay, so now let's go back to Humpty Dumpty and try to put it back together again. Uh, merge to stereo. And let's try it again. Anna's father. Lynn's father and the new Pat's father that's put on the correct template. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what might have been the issue with the templates is the, has to do with the Ancestry version 2. If I'm not mistaken, I want to say at some point version 2 kits 
had mitochondria data in it or something, and uh, then they switched, or vice versa. Maybe they didn't, and then they started adding mitochondrial data in there. But don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Suffice it to say that even though you have the same chip version, one or two, or, uh, you know, in whatever company, they can still change what they report in the uh, file itself from time to time, slightly. This does appear to be working this time, though. So some of the things that are going to be in store for future versions of Borland Genetics, uh, there's going to be some opportunity, uh, or tr a tree structure. Uh, so you could attach your DNA to different people in the family tree. Um, there is going to be a script feature that uh, allows you to record scripts for common tasks. Like, for example, I don't want to do all this again. If we fill in some of those gaps, right, in uh, in the visual phasing data, in the DNA painter map, I mean, cause I'd have to redo all these steps again. I have to remember what I did, remember which ones I converted. I could just record this as a script. And instead of up on the top of the progress where it says executing merge to stereo script, it'll say executing reconstruction Carl script, you know, and uh, it'll do it automatically next time. And that's what the father's name is there. So we will call this merged DNA resource Carl. Also, we got the creeper tool coming soon to assist with uh, workflows. Okay, add it to the resource list, and let's see what we got. We're not going to be able to preview this one in the segment view because it's uh, stereo, but what did I say? 57%, I think. We outdid it. Carl, 60%. So that's nice. We were able to incorporate the data from these other sisters. And, you know, I can go back and do that also uh, off the camera, uh, or I guess I'm not on the camera, but without the video recording, uh, I'll go back and do this and also create a new file for uh, the mother using the same technique, but using the using both Pat and Lynn as the children in the dark side tool, but next time using Anna's father as the uh, as the relative. Okay.